The plane, the plane. What happened was one day we're sitting around Aaron's office, a couple of guys from ABC, a couple of executives, and it was spring, and I guess I wasn't paying attention. I was looking out the window, and I was caught by the ABC vice president of programming who said to me, are we boring you? And I said a little bit, well, where would you rather be? I said, I'd rather be on a desert island with Charlie's Angels. The room stopped. There was this long pause, and the four of us, Aaron and I, and the two ABCs looked at each other, and we said, wait a minute. I bet a lot of people have fantasies, and that's how it began. That's simple. Very far out concept for a series, but in those days, Aaron and I didn't think we could fail. We thought we could make up something, and, and in this case, we were right. Now, the first script of Fantasy Island, the first one, started, the first act was Mr. Rourke would interview people as to why they should get to go to Fantasy Island. And, by the way, you had to pay $50,000. And I remember Brandon Stoddard, who is the head of programming at ABC, said to me upon reading the script, who cares? I'm not interested in all these interviews. And if you're saying you have to pay $50,000, 90% of the audience is tuning out already. They can't make it. Why don't we open with Act Two just the way you have it? where the plane is coming, Tattoo is yelling, the plane, the plane, the plane lands, the people get off, and Mr. Rock says, that's Fred Silverman, he's the head of pro. That's all we have to know. I, I said, that's all we have to know? Absolutely, nobody cares. Hello, nobody cares about these people. They want to see what their fantasies are and what's going to happen. So that was contributed by the head of programming at ABC, a master stroke. 25 pages ripped out of the script, and we started with Act Two, and he was right. And the first Fantasy Island we did was actually darker than the series began. It was a little nastier, a little edgier. A woman wanted to attend her own funeral to see how people um, reacted to her death, and they didn't react well because she was a rather tough woman. There was another story about a guy wanting to come back and go back in time to a romance he had, but we discovered that he, in effect, had killed his lover. It was... A little more like, like Rod Serling. Yeah, almost, exactly. That, yeah, exactly, Dan. More of the Twilight Zone feeling. Uh, but we all decided after seeing it that perhaps we, we needed to have a, a lighter tone to it. What became the hallmark of Fantasy Island was, here's this magic potion, and if you take it, every woman in the world will be attracted to you. And the female version. I know you're not a very attractive woman, but if you take this potion and spray it on as perfume, every man in the world will be attracted to you. I think we did that story 38 times. And, in fact, when we did the stories in the hour version, they never crossed because we always thought in syndication at that time it was very hard to syndicate hours. This way we could cut them up and make half hours out of them because the stories never crossed. It's not that we were mercenary. And by the way, this was when we hadn't shot the first episode yet. We were already assuming we were a hit, and now we were going into syndication.